Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Workbench. Um, I'm sorry for the shaky intro. I had a file server die this week, as uh, some of you know if you watch my vlog. So uh, the intro to this video was lost in that file server going down. Um, I've tried to recover it and I just couldn't recover it. So anyway, let's get started. This week we're going to build an alligator clip lead hanger. These things are always laying on my desk and getting tangled up or either they're in a drawer and I just it takes me five or six minutes to untangle them. So I decided to print something on my 3D printer that would allow me to easily clip them up within arm's reach. So with that said, let's get on with the show. Okay, so I kind of know how I want to uh, lay this out. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a base that's 180 millimeters long by about 40 millimeters wide. So I'm just going to do a little shortcut grab the rectangle tool. I'm going to set it to 180 millimeters comma 40 millimeters. We'll scroll down to that. I'm going to angle a little bit. Now I want to make it about 7 millimeters thick. Um, so we'll just do our push-pull tool and 7 millimeters. All right, so for our piece that's actually going to hang the uh, alligator clips, I'm going to find the middle of this. I'm just going to click my measure tool over and I'm just going to grab the middle like that. Then I want to come off each edge by maybe five millimeters. We'll come off this edge by about five millimeters. Now, we'll probably not be a bad idea to make this a little thick so that it can uh, can print well and that it's durable so we're gonna make it three millimeters thick that's just about right on second thought let's go with two millimeters so we want to offset one millimeter on each side of our center line then I'm going to drag and select the rectangle tool again and start at the top corner and come over here to the bottom right corner. Now, how tall do we want to make that? Well, the first thing we need to do is make this a component. And I'm not going to give it a special name, just a component. And then we're going to export it. So I use a program, or a plugin, or I guess SketchUp calls them extensions um, that I found on Airwolf 3D. I'll export it as millimeters, then set the export options to STL. And I'm just going to save it on my desktop and we're gonna call it we're gonna call it clip holder.stl okay so it's been exported okay I just wanted to talk for a second about the uh, STL uh, SketchUp extension that I use there's several out there and I've had problems with most of them um, I've been using this one that uh, Airwolf 3D linked to on their blog tutorial section for about two years now without a single issue. Um, so basically I'll put a link in the description of the video. Um, if you visit the link um, they'll have a full tutorial on how to you know use the plugin but they'll give you a link to download the extension from uh, guitarlist.com. So if you just come over to guitarlist.com that link's also in the description. You can uh, see here that's called convert SketchUp SKV files to DFX or STL um, and they have a version of it for both the old and new versions of 
uh, SketchUp. They have installation instructions, but basically all I do is when I want to install a plugin, if you go to um, if you go to window in SketchUp, if you go to Window Preferences, and then come to Extensions, there's a little button here. If you click it to install extensions, then you navigate to your extension and uh, find your RZ. So like here's a SketchUp DA card with RZ. If you open that, the uh, it will ask you. I'm not going to install it again because I already have it installed. But it'll ask if you want to install it. If you click yes, then it will be installed and ready to use without having to restart the program. The next thing I want to do is run the object we just designed through NetFab, and uh, you can use their cloud service at netfab.azurewebsites.net. Um, what you have to do is uh, click upload, find your file, and that's it. It will uh, queue the file up, it will repair it, and then allow you to download it. Okay, so now that it's uh, downloaded, what I need to do is uh, open it up in NetFab and check everything out. So the first thing I'm going to do is open the first one. And if we just look at clipholder.stl, which is the unnetfab file, you'll see that the object's not manifold and not watertight. Um, and this will just cause some problems printing. Usually you can look and right there we can... Oh, never mind. Um, I don't see where it's not watertight, but that's what the software says. So let's remove that and add the, and add the clip holder fixed STL. So, here you can see that clip holder fixed is manifold and it's ready to print. Alright, let's head over to the 3D printer and start it printing. I'm going to print this out on my Lulzbot AO100 3D printer. I've had this printer for about the last three years, and it was actually the first printer I piced up after my home burnt down in 2012. Um, the printer is a great printer. I've printed almost 300 pounds of filament through it, and it's starting to get worn out, but it still is doing the job. The print's probably going to take about an hour and 30 minutes, so I'm going to speed things up for you guys. So the print ended up taking about an hour and 20 minutes to print, and there is a little bit of warping, but I'm not really worried about that. This is simply going to stick under a drawer, and no one's ever going to notice. So as you can see, just when you throw a pile of alligator clips on your bench top, they tangle up and it's just not pretty. So um, let's, let me show you how this works. So you just simply pinch an alligator clip and you pinch it onto the holder like that. Um, I'm going to speed things up again so we can get through this process and get this thing hung up under one of the uh, component boxes. So with the general concept down, let's go ahead and hang this on one of my parts bins.
Um, I'm going to use some double-sided mounting tape and a razor blade to trim things off. Just cut a strip of the mounting tape the same length as the mounting block and then use a razor blade to trim it off and once it's trimmed, press it down really tight. Um, you might have to scuff up the bottom of your 3D print depending on how slick it is. I've had to do that in the past because mounting tape just doesn't hold on. What you didn't see was me rubbing the bottom of this uh, alligator clip mount with some sandpaper just to give it a little bit of a tooth to bite into that tape. So just press it on the bottom of your shelf or a box or whatever and then hang your alligator clips. Over time the alligator clips will stretch out and they'll hang almost perfectly straight. Well that wraps up another episode of The Workbench. I'm really excited to finally start organizing my space the way I want to and using my 3D printers to do it. I've kind of been planning this for a couple of years now and I've just never had the time to really sit down and implement it like I would like to. Um, I can't thank Voltivo and Cubacity.com enough for sponsoring my projects and my website and everything I do with 3D printing. There have been two great companies to work with and if you're in the market for some high quality 3D printing filament, I can't recommend Excel Fill enough. Um, Voltivo's Excel Fill is the most vibrant filament I've ever used and I've honestly had only a few problems in the entire 150 pounds I've printed of the stuff. I can often print an entire spool without having a single failed print. Um, it's all made from non-recycled plastic virgin material so you get the cleanest possible filament. If you head over to cubacity.com and on your next order of Voltivo X-Fill filament, if you enter uh, coupon code MBW10, you'll get a 10% off discount on your order. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you.